Yeah. <laughs> That's how we do it. That's how yep. we, everybody pumped up. Everybody yeah. pumped up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how we get it started. What is going on, everyone? Yeah. It's your boy, Fat Samurai Guy, hanging out with some legends today. That's yep. right. We have the man, the myth, the legend, the showstopper, the icon. That's right. Michael Woods. What an honor to have you here, my friend. Welcome to the show. Thank you. All right. Yes, yes. And also we have Radical Reggie. That's right. Fighting game enthusiasts. That's right. And <laughs> martial arts movie buff as well. And Michael Woods fan. So it's great having you here, brother. Yep. Thank you. And you, y'all know who he is. Y'all know who he is. That's right. The legend himself, Demetrius Angelo. Welcome back, brother. Thank you, sir. Appreciate having <laughs> me here. Appreciate having everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and thanks again, Demetrius, for uh, setting us up, me and Michael, and then making this happen and hanging out. Oh, yes, sure. we're going to have some fun talking kung fu, martial arts, movies, action, film, all that good stuff. We're going to have a good time. We're going to uh, hopefully get a little bit of tidbit behind the scenes, hopefully mm -hmm. a little bit from Michael, from what he can remember, uh, uh, from what of it. All of the films he has been in, and we're going to show some of the fight scenes. We're going to react to it. We're going to have yes. a great time. Uh, but first, uh, again, thanks again for being here, Demetrius. Uh, that's right, the urban, that's right, action showcase, son. That's right, yeah. coming up. We got to let yeah. everybody know what's going down. And and thanks again. It was a huge honor, Demetrius, way, way, way back for having Samurai Guy be a, a little slice, a little part of it. You know, I appreciated that, my brother. And, uh, and me and Radical Reggie, we reviewed yeah. the film surviving the game yeah the action uh or urban <laughs> action showcase and we had a lot of fun so thanks again demetrius for that so for all of you badasses watching right now we're gonna we're gonna play the clip so y'all if y'all don't know now you know son Yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. A lot of legends. I see that video. That's right. That's They're right. They're all behind me. We've had all these legends. Everybody you see in this photo behind me, those are all the people that's come through in the past 10 years, uh, approaching our 11th year this year. Wow. Woo. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Um, yeah. 11 years. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I, you want to segue right into the call for entries uh, promo? Let, her, let people know. Yeah, absolutely. Here we go, guys. Check this All out. Entries are live now. Let's do it. was hot oh yeah oh yeah that was hot and uh one of my boy i saw one of my boys videos in there matt Merritt from keep forward productions yeah yeah man rage peaks at night yeah that was awesome 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 stuff all right all right let's go ahead and get it started here with the legend himself michael all right so let us know my brother how did you get started in martial arts what was there something about martial arts that interests you? How did how did you get the bug, my friend? 
No, I don't really know. Um, my father owned some nightclubs. He had a uh, one of his bouncers was a martial art guy, Charlie Babbitt, and um, I was a little kid then. And he showed us a few moves. Later on, I'm gonna just fast forward. Later on, I, I was hanging out with this guy, John Avenitis, who was whose sister was married to a Taekwondo guy. We used to go up to Boston Chinatown, watch movies and stuff like that. Nice. I saw a demonstration one time. We saw a demonstration of the Walam Kung Fu Academy, Chan Poi School, doing a demonstration. So I lived in Providence. That's about an hour away from Boston. So we, we used to go up there on Saturdays and Sundays. So we decided that on the next weekend going up, um, we were going to go by Chan Poi School and I was going to join. What ha as luck would have it or whatever, um, when we went to Chan Poi School, it was closed. So I said, well, let's go to Chinatown, eat, get some books, magazines or whatever, and, and we'll go back to Providence. But while we were sitting in the restaurant, I happened to look across the street and I saw this lady in the window teaching martial arts. So I said to John, hey, let's go over there and uh, see what that's all about. So we went over there. That was Master Bosa Mark, Donnie's mother. And I said, you know what? I'll just sign up here. And that's what I did. And by sheer luck, that's how I got started. Um, after a oh. few lessons there, uh, they had this back room area where a lot of different martial artists would work out. Donnie worked out with a lot of martial artists. He was a young kid then, 12, 13. I don't remember exactly. And um, so I went back there and, and, you know, moved around a little bit. And I seen him working on a sidekick. So I asked him the most corniest of all questions. I said, hey, what do you use that kick for? Uh, back then, I did some street fighting, no martial art fighting or whatever. And he looked at me like it was a corny question, like it was. But that's <laughs> sort of how we started. Then after a few weeks, I'd say, he, he had a little side hustle going. And I don't know if his mother knew about it or not. He was teaching tech, He would teach me some techniques. He charged me five hours of technique. And slowly but surely, we became friends. We hung out uh, nice. a little bit. This is mother and father trusted him with me because they didn't they were very tight on, on letting him get out a lot of right. a lot of action going on in chinatown at that time and right next to chinatown was the combat zone with all the prostitutes drugs and whatever so they didn't want him to wander around too much all but right. they let him hang with me we started going to the movies and uh or way way restaurant get some chastu and lychee bang and 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 shoot the breeze and i i i i don't want to talk too much about donnie i know everybody wants interviews, that's all I want to talk about. But what I will say is, one thing that I respect about him is when we went to see, watch those movies, he said, one day I'm going to be in movies. Another prediction he made was when that GQ magazine, everybody started getting to fashion, he said, I'm going to be on the cover of that one day. And he's done three, four, five of them in Asia already. And the other thing he said is, Long before he made a movie, he said, I'm going to work with Mike Tyson one day. At that time, Mike Tyson was considered the baddest man on the planet. And, of mm -hmm. course, Donnie did that. So, anyway, that's how I got started. Donnie's mother eventually sent him to – he went to China to, to, to study some wushu there. And on his way back – I don't know the whole story exactly. He stopped in Hong Kong. Uh, one of his mother's students from Hong Kong introduced him to Yun Wo Peng. And that's how we got started. Well, he was out there making movies for a while. For whatever happened, reason, he came back. During that time, I was doing a lot of studying and a lot some Taekwondo, some Apkido. And also, oh, I'd go to the movies every week. And, and uh, I'd, I'd watch guys like Wang Chung Lee and a few of the kicking dudes. And yeah. I'd write down all kinds of notes in a notebook. To, that's the only thing I got to this day. It's about 40 years old, all my martial art kicking and stretching notes. And I practiced all these crazy kicks and flips. Donnie got to get got back. We got together. We went out to eat. We went back to the school. And I started showing him all this stuff. And, you know, I'm not going to say he was impressed. But eventually, he went back to Hong Kong. He told Yun Wo Peng. And, and eventually, they, they flew me over there to do the movie Tiger Cage. Right. That's how I got started. Nice, right. nice. That was awesome. the first one. Okay, wow. So I got to, I got to, first of all, first of all, I got to, I got to. I gotta give a shout out right here. Look at this. 88 films. Shout out to 88 films. That's right, baby. In the line of duty, <laughs> box set one through four, and Tiger Cage. 
That's right. Woo, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. There you go. One, one to three box set. Uh, you guys, if you guys are fans of these films, you got to check it out. That's right. Go to the website. Buy them now. They're going fast. But I had to show that. Give, give a little shout out for, for companies out there and studios representing the classics and remastering them for a whole new generation. So that's what we, we need more of that. We need more of that. But I got to ask Demetrius and Reggie. We'll start with Demetrius first. Tiger Cage, Demetrius, this really changed the game when this came out. This really changed the game, especially with the with uh, Michael's fight sequence in the film. Change, it, it was totally different. So the first time you saw Tiger Cage, Demetrius, what was your reaction? Uh, well, first I want to say, Michael, man, I respect you so much. I'm so grateful for what you did because you didn't do it just for yourself. You did it for a culture mm -hmm. because there's only about five people that's ever done what you've done. Ron Van Cleef, Carl Scott, yourself, um, uh, Robert Samuels, and uh, Eugene Tom Thomas. So that's it. And also for you to be representing on the, he is on the cover of that box set. If you look that's clearly, right. he's there mm -hmm. and he's on the poster. So your work that you've done laid a foundation mm -hmm. for others to have hope. <laughs> but he's also on the 88 Films box set, if you look right there. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, you know, your work laid a foundation. I know you're a very humble guy. You don't really think of yourself that much. But I'm telling you, what you did mattered, and it matters because it gives us representation, man, and tells people that you can do the impossible. You never know, you know, what you can do if you put your heart to it. And you talked about your training and how you just used to write notes. And, you know, if you're hungry enough, Man, you never know how far you can go. So far, so I just want to say thank you for that. Um, as far as Tiger Cage is concerned, man, it was a great film. I thought it was very inventive because I think that's when Dominique was doing some little MMA moves in that mm. that film. So you know, I was just glad to see you, uh, you know, on the screen uh, doing what you was doing. You know what I'm saying? So, you oh, know, yeah. big up to you for Ooh. all of it. Yes, yeah. yes. Thank you. Reggie, uh, first time you saw Tiger Cage, man, what'd you think of it? So it, this is kind of weird. I saw Tiger Cage in a weird order. I saw Tiger Cage 2 first, ah. and then I saw Tiger Cage 1 I later. can't hear Reggie. Uh-oh, let me we'll turn up your volume, Reggie. There you go. Mm -mm. Oh, can't hear you now. What happened there? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's all right. You We're hit gonna, something, man. You, you hit something. No, cord or something. <laughs> See if it's still plugged in. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's working on that. Okay. Well, while he's working on that, I have some questions for Michael. Michael, how yep. was it working with uh, uh, Jackie Chung? And uh, did you get a chance to work with Low Lay? Um, I did a scene with Low. We did a scene with Low Lay. I don't know if it ever made it to the film. They shot a, a few different scenes that I don't know if they made it into the film or not. Um, but uh, Jackie Jung was probably the best guy on the set, to be honest with you. The dude would trans, nobody would translate for me. Director Yun Wo Ping wasn't speaking much English then. Most of them guys wasn't speaking much English then. Vincent Lin came later on in the production and uh, I had a fight scene with Jackie and, and he he um, translated everything for me. He helped me out a lot. Um, he actually, you, you know, everybody thinks that filmmaking is so glamorous. I was just, a, just to them, I was just another piece of furniture or another prop. You got a black guy in Tiger Cage. I wasn't that jacked up. Uh, and, and that was the prop of it. Jackie made sure they fed me right, treated me just the way they were treating Doodle -doo and all the big stars. And uh, he actually was a cool dude. He's a singer, actually. Gave me yeah. a few of his CDs. And uh, he, 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 I'd have to say the, my best experience on Tiger Cage, even above Donnie Yen, was, was uh, Jackie. Donnie was wow. under a lot of pressure then. And Donnie wasn't a big star then either. They killed him off quick. Um, and so... Jackie was a shining light. I guess it went on and on and on, but that was the best part of that movie. After I did Tiger Cage, to be honest with you, I said, hey, I'm not doing no more of these movies. The, the, I, like Guys like Bobby Samuels and them guys, 
they wanted to make movies and they continue to make movies. John Salvitti, all of those guys. Me, I never was the guy who said, hey, I want to make movies. It's just something that I fell into. I wanted to go to Hong Kong. I, at that time, I was attracted to the little Chinese girls and that whole bit. So my thought of film, it didn't turn out that way. 16 hours on set in the tank top in the rain on Stanley fighting on a pair. I couldn't wear no pads because of the clothes that they were on. They're trying to jerk me around on a wire, but they couldn't pull me. And yeah. it, it was just a crazy experience. And again, it was, you know, a lot of people think you make all this crazy money. We were making nothing. So we were, you know, we were barely surviving. We were, and so the experience to me afterwards, I said, nah, I'm not going to do any more. Donnie talked me into going to do in the line of duty four because Tiger Cage did so well. When Tiger Cage came out, they were transitioning from the period pieces. They needed something different. And right. that's what your that's what Yun Wo Ping, that's what he did. He was doing Jackie Snake and Eagle Shadow and all them types of films. So they 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 did the movie as an experiment to see if it would take off. DMB films did a movie called Rage and Fire, I think, with Bruce Lee's son, which did well. So they wanted to come out with another one and that's how that whole process worked copy that copy of yes oh wait hold on one second wait what we got another we got another celebrity we got another badass uh, guest here hold on a second what yes Bob, sir bobby samuels <laughs> is here what's going on brother let's, let's hi can you guys hear me yeah 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 oh yeah i, I wasn't gonna miss this at all brother <laughs> at all thank you guys Do you guys hear me yet I yeah, can't hear Bobby either. Bobby, uh, mics have an issue with the hearing, so we got to turn it up. I had to turn up my mic. Um, I think I'm up as, as far as I can go. Mike, can you hear me? Mike, can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? I can, I can, hear, you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. But so it's great so having you. We translate for you. We translate. For yeah, you. we'll translate, man. We'll keep it rocking. Oh uh, yeah, just listen. I, 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 words can't express, man. I met Mike years ago, and. Um, He's been a, an idol of mine, you know. He's it's been so inspiring with my mission to Hong Kong. I mean, Mike is a legend, man. And I know, you know, Mike's Mike is Mike, you know what I mean? But yeah. I just I want to give him his flowers while he's here, man. And like there's not many of us that have trekked the journey that we did, uh, especially for Asia, being African Americans trying to make it in a in a film industry where, you know, it's just it just doesn't exist. Um, so he broke barriers. He proved to me that I could do what I did. Um, I remember watching VHS tapes with him, or Cheeto on Fire, Tiger Cage, and I just kept saying, mm -hmm. man, this brother, man, I, one day, one day I'm going to be have the opportunity because I came in the 90s. Mike was there yeah. before me. So yeah. his images are really what helped propel me. You know, my godfather, Ron Van Cleve, Carl Scott, and Michael Woods. Uh, uh, of course, Jim Kelly, uh, Carl, Michael Thomas, all, all all those guys, Eugene Woods, excuse me. Um, they were just inspirations to, to, to propel me to go to Hong Kong. Um, again, I, you know, I still do movies. Um, that's, that's just me, you know, that's my life. But um, yeah. these guys are icons in American, uh, uh, in Hong Kong cinema. And I just think that we, we need to show them, you know, yes. the appreciation uh, mm -hmm. for giving us all those wonderful memories. They're true yes. heroes. Yes, yes, they are. Yes. Right, right. And uh, Michael, uh, Bobby's just given mad respect to you, my friend, that you paved the way for him in case you weren't able to hear him. So that's what... Uh, I, I can't hear him, but, you know, uh, during that era, I, we were like a close... We sort of stayed together, me, Donnie, John. We didn't branch out and meet a lot of people. So guys like Bobby Samuels and a few other guys, I never got the opportunity to meet during my film days we'll say but later on to demetrius's platform urban action showcase i did get to meet bobby and and i met a bunch of people that I, I i didn't really know i'm not a people person everybody that's been around me knows that but one of the most realist dudes one of the guys that i really respect a lot forget the martial art thing just as a human being is bobby samuels we talk a little bit on 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 the facebook platform always been respectful you know i throw a happy birthday to my daughter he says happy birthday all these good things i and, and there's a, there was a few good things that came out of my experience in urban action showcase i went to a few of them 
but one of them is definitely meeting Bobby Samuels, and I'm not blowing smoke up nobody's ass or anything like that. It's not like we around each other or anything, but that's one of the realest dudes that I met, in, not only in the film industry, but in the whole martial art industry. So nice. thank you for your praise, even though I didn't didn't hear it. I'm sure one day we'll get together again. I would like to do an Urban Action Showcase again. Um, yes, there is one other dude that I always wanted to meet, and there's not a lot of cats I want to meet. Michael Jai White and Don Wilson's all him. I saw him once. That's good enough for me in a lifetime. But uh, Bobby, I'd like to hang around a little bit more. Yes. Um, and yes. also Carl Scott. I never got to meet him. I'd like yes. to meet him uh, one day. Other than that, you know, there's not not a lot of cats that I can kowtow to, but Bobby's definitely one. So yes, keep yes. up the good work, brother. I see you're doing a lot of things. I'm glad you continue your journey. Um, God bless you. Thank you so much, brother. Hey, listen, yeah. I'm always going to pay it forward, and 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 with African American males and, and martial arts films, you know. Um, that's just in my blood. It's just part of my DNA. And right now I'm blessed to still be able to do it. You know, I'm going to be working with Ron Hall shortly. So All right. A lot of things coming up yeah. for, for the new year. Carl nice. Scott, I'm going to be working with him as well. And I hope that Mike, please let him know. I hope that he can uh, join us next year at Urban Action because Carl's coming well, again. This uh, year, this year, we're trying to bring him this year. This year, excellent. All right. we're trying to bring him this November. Yes, I speak so to Carl. If I can get it to, if I can get it, it, that's on the it's on the agenda okay so if i can make it happen because the people like he said don't know how these things work behind the scenes they yeah. think they think folks got some pixie dust or something <laughs> it, it, it's a struggle unfortunately but we're going to do the best we can and if we can make it happen sir i will be calling you up for sure and, make and, it I'll, be, and I'll be and i'll be and i'll be speaking to uh carl and I'll, cool. I'll make sure that happens nice nice yes, Right awesome, awesome. Very well said. Very well said. Uh Reggie, now that your mic's working. <laughs> it's working good. I wanted to make really, sure. Really, really quick, Reggie, your thoughts on the uh Tiger Cage films, and then we're gonna get to the first fight scene. We're gonna show everyone. So it was kind of weird. I saw Tiger Cage two first, and then I saw Tiger Cage one later. But uh going into Tiger Cage part two, um, I remember watching that with friends and uh and the part with Michael with with that chain. And uh, dragging down you know, off, off that uh, that crate, yeah. We we were out of our seats watching that fight. And the bar where he grabbed him and put him in the suplex in the box, and then oh, dragged man. him some more. Everybody was going crazy. I showed it to all my friends back in the day. It was a great time. And like uh, we we always, I mean, every time we watched that movie, you know, it was a good time. But we always try to fast forward a little bit to get to Michael Woods part because that yeah. part was it was hot. <laughs> we loved it. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, he's like Michael. Every time Michael Woods shows up in a movie, he literally mm -hmm. you steal the scenes, Michael, when you show yeah. up in a movie. I even I listen. I even <laughs> no, I, I think it's all a matter of opinion. Um, some people like certain type of fighting things. Some people like weaponry. You know. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't want to sound like a cornball, but I mean, it, it's sort of obvious that some of us will stand out. If you're putting us against the backdrop of a bunch of Chinese guys, so mm. I mean, just by sheer color, we stick out. Well, you, I mean, I love Robin Shaw. I mean, uh, I love that guy, and he had a great yeah, fight. In the, yeah, he yeah, had a great I, fight in the in the movie. Yeah. But your your fight with with Donnie kind of stole the movie. That was to yeah, me you, you the, real, the, main, <laughs> the real best main event fight at the end. There, that was the real finale mm -hmm. fight to us. So. Yeah. Uh, no. There was there was a few okay fights in 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 the movie, um, and and Robin, you know, Robin does his thing. I think Robin and Donnie has a backstory, but I'm not going to get into that. All right, copy that. Yeah. All right, well, awesome. let's go ahead and uh, let's have some fun. Let's watch. Let's go back a little bit earlier, though. Uh, let's show the first scrap uh, from Tiger Tiger Cage One. Yeah, and uh, the the fight on the pier. Let's go ahead and watch. React yeah, we talk about this. Add our commentary to that. Let's have some fun with that. There we go. All right, look at that. Come All out right. of nowhere. Look at that behind him. Let's have some fun. <laughs> Here we go. Oof. 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 
funny when people say these fight scenes are good because if you look at it, I'm stiff as hell. I have no clue to what I'm doing. I've never did a film here up until this time. This took forever to shoot because it would it rain for a while, then it would stop, and then it would rain for a while and stop. Oh, wow. Wow. And then they, there was a lot of different things that I would oh. offer to do, but they didn't want, you know, because they didn't want you to upstage people. Gotcha. So no, it was, right. you know. It's still phenomenal. I mean, you, you guys have great timing and speed. I mean, this is phenomenal. Well, I got to be honest with you. As far as my part, um, I kind of, when I see this, I think my kicks were much better in this than in any of the other movies that I shot. And Michael, it was it was uh, your idea to do a lot of the boxing and taekwondo, correct? To kind of add to this fight, right? Well, I at the, in this mo particular movie here, I would go through Donnie and and say opinions and. At this time, Donnie wasn't. Donnie was more the Bruce Lee-ish, um, and some kicking, a little bit of boxing. He wasn't really into the MMA and stuff at that time. I, I besides doing some different martial arts, I also actually studied professional wrestling with Killer Kowalski. Oh wow! And um, I knew I there was a lot of moves that I showed that later on in um, Tiger Cage Two. They allowed me to um, be part of the, I don't want to say the choreography team, but I was putting a lot of insight in. I chose three or four different techniques and they nice. would, Donnie would decide, yeah, you can do that or no, you can't do that. And, and, and uh, that type of thing. At this, the, the, I don't know what anybody else's experience was on filming these movies, but with me, there was a whole lot of like machoism going on there was a whole lot of um no you can't do that you know you we don't want you to jump in the end throw five kicks because the stock can't jump up in the end throw five kicks so right. we want to limit you to what you to do and also a lot of stuff that i offered to do they told me well we can't shoot that we can't film that that's too mm. small and they mm. didn't have an understanding and i'm not putting anybody down but they didn't really have an understanding on how to shoot it then after okay. they got to see some mma and different things like that a lot of the stuff that I offered up, I seen later on in, in some of the the other movies uh, that that they shot with the wrestling and and uh, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't, right. They didn't know how to shoot grappling. They didn't. They didn't. Know well, how to they shoot. didn't want to. Yeah, they didn't want to shoot any any grappling. Any I was flying head scissors. I was on barring. I was doing that type of stuff. Wow. They didn't want to show that. And uh, nowhere am I saying that I was. The first, because in Enter the Dragon, they did on bars and they did different things. So I'm not saying I'm the, I was the first to do it. I don't want anybody to get confused with that. Yeah, because yeah. I was trying to offer up a particular style that I wanted to use as my character, and right. you know, they uh, they wasn't quite ready for it, or they didn't want to quite shoot it. And and it goes without saying, your Ping is probably the best at it. Period. So oh, I'm yeah. not questioning oh, yeah. him, questioning their opinions or, or anything right. at all. Right, right. Well, let's uh, uh, this shot right here, Demetrius. This right here, right. This kick coming up that Michael does, right here. Boom, bam. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Outstanding. That's amazing, Demetrius. Great timing. Demetrius, ten out of ten. Yeah, great timing. Great yeah. timing. With that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, Demetrius, you're being, you're, you're being nice, and I know Bobby Samuels is looking at it, and you could see a couple of little mistakes that I made in, in that. You know, when when we, uh, I don't, I didn't really understand filmmaking, so your move had to be big and go across the camera, and and some of the technique that I would throw would be more like the fighting style, smaller and more direct. So even right. though that kick looked good, it, it was it. it felt it's not something it goes so fast that you don't really catch the mistakes gotcha 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 well it looks it looks beautiful <laughs> all right well i'm glad you i'm glad you liked it i think that movie was 1988 so you got guys yeah. like scott atkins and those guys doing 540s and 720s and everything else nowadays so yeah 
Oh, yeah. But uh, still, still, phenomenal fight. Phenomenal. Uh, 10 out of 10 stars. That's right. Before we go to the next fight, uh, Michael, really quickly, uh, you got you got people in the in chat right now. They're saying, hey, it looks good to me. They like that kick, yeah. Michael. Oh, people that's in the chat yeah. right now. They, they're like, they're liking the fight. They're loving it. They're loving it. Yeah. Look at it. Well, I think we are. Uh... I think we are our own. I'll speak for me. I am my own worst critic. So I've not seen anything that I've done that I could say, hey, I'm proud of this. Let me show this to my grandkids. And that's right. why I never watch any one of my movies right. in its entirety. Because basically I come on, I beat my chest a little bit, and I get killed. So, right. you know, to me, it's, yeah, maybe if, it's all if good. people enjoyed it, then yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm happy. But yeah, for me, right. it's, it's no big deal. Right. Well, what do they say about what do they say, I, Bobby? Great, I, great I, artists I, are hard on them, hard on themselves. That's right. I actually, <laughs> well, actually I'm doubt if I'm a great artist, brother. But thank you anyway. <laughs> I actually enjoyed a um, a series that he did, a German TV series. Um, his yes. action was really good in that. That was some of his uh, his best work. But uh, I don't think it was seen on the mainstream. But it was very right. good. Michael, uh, you you did the behind the scenes stunts and action choreography for this series right here, Der Puma. You want to talk a little bit about that? Bobby and Bobby really loved it. Well, you know, I yeah, I did work on Puma. I was on the stunt team with Kenji Tananagagi, who was the man. Um, and uh, we worked for Donnie, a um, couple other Japanese stuntmen. John Salviti came over for, for some of it. Kenny uh -huh. Perez worked on some of it. Um, what, the, what, what, uh, what my understanding is, when the German producer hired Donnie, they wanted to kind of get a little bit of that Hong Kong flavor into German television. And um, to be honest with you, when I went to Germany and I started watching some of them shows, I didn't think it was really going to work. They don't have that type of sense of humor. And ah. the guy, the, 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 the star of the show, Mickey Hart, was very good martial artist, but he listened to every single word Donnie said. He was probably the most obedient student there could be. But I just don't think the German audience liked that whole Jackie Chan flip around, jump around type of stuff. They're more into the hard type of styles. And, and, and um, Donnie was trying to work some different angles and some different tricks and some stuff like that. And, you know, in some parts it sold and some parts... You know, it, it didn't do so well. The, the TV series did all right overall. I don't know if whatever ended up happening, um, if they wanted to bring them back, didn't want to bring them back, if they ever did anything with that anymore or not. I, I think the show was only the number one show one or two weeks, and then it just sort of kind of faded down a little bit. Um, gotcha. You, you, you know, I don't want to sit here and be critical and, 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 and you know, no, be honest. It's okay, Michael. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Be honest. You're using sometimes you're using five foot two and five foot three guys to stunt double a six foot guy. Oh, a lot wow. of stuff was to me was was too obvious. Like, um, and then they brought a few other guys over there. That Andre Mavis is a world. Uh, I don't know what style he champion he was, but. Great martial artists, and uh, that they brought Ron. Uh, I can't say his last name, Smogensberg or something like that. Guy who was in Jackie Chan. Ron who am I? Ron or, or yeah. yeah. They they brought a few guys like that that came over, and I just don't think they utilized those guys to their full potential. I mean, gotcha. doing break dance moves in a fight scene, not oh. really my type of thing. But you know, okay. some people like it, I guess. Um, and that, and that's the pro that's one of the problems I had, and it's one of the problems why I'm probably not ever. I had no interest in ever pursuing uh, a film career or anything. I'm I can be pretty critical of different right. things, and some people perceive that as you're going against your team, and I'm not going against my team. I'm telling you that don't to me that don't work. I, that don't look good. That's not, not really the product. So yeah, I worked on Puma. Great experience. Germany was great. They fly you out for two weeks. Then you, you have to go back home for two weeks, and then you come back, and it was a really good experience. Okay. The people were really nice. Um, nice, nice. All right. Never got to see an episode, so I really can't tell you 
what it looked like. But um, well, if Bobby some, said it looked good, I guess yeah. it looked good. Bobby, yeah. Bobby said it looked good, and some people in the chat also enjoyed it too. So, well, that, so that's uh, good. That and yeah. you want people to like your product. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really quick before we go to the next fight. Um, uh, really quick question for you, Michael. I also enjoyed. I don't think a lot of people talk about this fight sequence from Tiger Cage One, but I really enjoyed your fight in the apartment complex against Jackie Chung because we never really seen a fight like this where you guys were, you know, fighting over the oxygen tank because you turned on the gas to oh, rig the, right. the explosion in the apartment. And then Jackie Ch Chung's character shows up and you guys have this really good fight. But no, but this was like, this was like, it was a little bit of comedic uh, genius in this, but this was a very uh, uh, inventful uh, fight scene here. This is a, a really great. When I rewatched the movie yesterday, I really enjoyed this sequence right here. So was this was this a creative fight sequence kind of made up on the spot as you as you go, or you guys had an idea of how this was going to play out? First of all, I had no idea that nothing, period, because <laughs> nobody was talking to me. Everybody was talking in Chinese, and I was just right. standing around. Uh, and that's why I said eventually Jackie realized I got I'm clueless to what they're doing here, right. and he started translating for me. Now, Yin Mo Ping, again, it goes without saying, he's a master. But part of his skill is, is, is to come up with these quirky little comic type of things yeah. to interject yeah. in. And then, I hate to say it, but, you know, to them, you know, having a black guy do a lot of this stuff is actually funny within itself. To me, now, and 40 years later, I look back and I say, yeah, I, I'm, I was being an asshole. But to wow. me, I was like, wait. You, you, you guys are uh, sort of like making me look stupid here. Like I'm supposed to be this big bad guy, yeah, and also yeah. you know I was fighting in the street. I was bodyguarding some rappers and different stuff here in the states, and I was going over there being a basically a clown. And I couldn't adapt in the beginning, but Jackie, gotcha. Jackie kind of explained it to me. He, he helped okay. me through it all. And nice. and yeah, at the end of the day, um. I don't know fight wise. I never saw the fight, so I don't know what it looks like. Jackie, I know wasn't a fighter, so they were ad libbing a lot. Okay. But what I'll say is, it was my best experience filming Tiger Cage, and and right. right along finishing up that fight scene, that's when Vincent Lynn showed up, and they introduced yeah. us to Vincent Lynn the night that um, me and Jackie finished up that fight scene, um, and I got to meet uh, Vincent. Nice. Well, this fight sequence, uh, fighting over the oxygen, uh, really wasn't done anywhere else until Jet Li did it in one of his films in the 90s. There's a right. very similar sequence where they were fighting over the, you know, the gas filled up the, the apartment complex and they were fighting over it. It's so. a film called, it was a film so Donnie called. Yen has a saying that there's nothing new under the sun. So I think if you dig deep enough into the world of movies, and remember, a lot of them guys looked at those Buster Keaton and all those old, if that's who right. he is, whoever yeah. the co comedian was back in the day, I don't really follow comedy, but they looked at a lot of those movies and a lot of people learned a lot of stuff from them movies and they just used it. I mean, the same right. thing with the pirate movies, they were using wire work and stuff like that way back mm -hmm. in the day. And Hong Kong yeah. sort of adapted yeah. it. Now, maybe some Chinese stuntmen will tell me I'm wrong. They created it. And to be honest yeah. with you, I don't know who created it. But well, um, the, they got the a best, lot of that stuff from yeah. some of the old movies. Copy that. Well, the best is usually borrow from the best, and it's uh, <laughs> there's, there's no shame in that. It's all good. But Bobby, what was so, the Jet Li movie? You were that was um, Zhong Lan Hoi Bo Biu, which is um, bodyguard from Beijing. And it's a funny, funny thing you should mention that I was actually standing right there when that scene was being designed. And I sing, uh, Colin Cho and myself were filming uh, "Don't Give a Damn" at that time, and we were. He was filming that film, so we would finish Don't Give a Damn, and I would go with him to set because um, I wanted to meet Jet that day. Um, and that was the particular day I was there with that particular scene. That we're oh, discussing. wow. Yeah. How cool you were there. How That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, really quick here, uh, we have chat here. Box Office Banter says, Michael Woods is the man. Just watched Tiger Cage 1 and 2 over this past month. Always yeah. tripped me out. How it was the same actors, different characters in it, but he loved it. So there you go. Some more <laughs> love some from the fans in chat. Uh, and we'll, uh, that was very nice box office banter. Thank you for that. But, yeah, we'll keep on rocking and rolling. But, yeah, I did enjoy uh, this sequence. 
I love this photo right here with you and uh, you and Wu Ping. It's a great behind the and scenes. John Dovidi, who's still John. doing film. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So speaking of Vincent Lin, uh, I had him here on the channel several times. It was really cool and awesome to meet him. Uh, did you get a chance to interact with him a lot, Michael? No, no, not on, not on uh, Tiger Cage. Um, not at all. They brought Vincent came in later, and um, now nah, we didn't get to talk. I uh, again, Dem Demetrius's platform is where we we ran into each other again, and and we did talk. We touched base. We talked a little bit uh, on Facebook, and um, all right, that's really where I got to to meet him at. Um, Again, I only saw him once or twice in Hong Kong during the Hong Kong years. But for Tell me, me now, let me tell you that I didn't hang around Hong Kong. Like a lot of guys, a lot of guys wanted to make movies. So they went there, they packed their bags, they went and they, they went through the hardships and whatever else to make movies. I wasn't interested in that at all. I, I, they fly me out. I do my movies. I say, I got to leave by this date. I'd finish the movies and I'd fly back. So I didn't get to interact with a lot, a lot of people. In, in the film industry there. And there was other guys. Gary Daniels seems like a really good dude. Um, we talk on there. And I didn't get to meet any of those guys. Scott Akin, he contacted me when he was going to fight uh, Donnie in, in one of those Ip Man movies. And we talked a little bit. But I didn't really interact with that many, many uh, fight people. I think Bobby had a friend. And I don't want to be wrong. I, I think his name was Winston. Uh, Winston Ellis, yes. Um, I can't hear Bobby, so but anyway, I think we, me and Winston was talking to the same girl at one time, and I never even crossed paths, never even got to cross paths with him to, to see who he was. Um, <laughs> yeah, he, he said it was cross paths in urban action. It seems to be the space to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said it was Winston Ellis there, Michael. Yeah. Uh, all right, copy that. Well, let's keep on rocking and rolling. Uh, Demetrius, okay. how, how long do we have you, my friend? Uh, you got me for uh, 15 more minutes. All right. All right. All right. You got you got you got enough time for one more fight, Demetrius, and then That's we'll we'll let you go. Okay. All right. One more fight for uh, the the legend, and then uh, Demetrius has to do his thing. But yeah, let's keep on going here. We're having a good time. All right. Next up, we have. Go ahead and skip forward to it here. Yeah, son. Oh, yeah. It's the final boss moment, baby. The final boss moment. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the final boss. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> that is, yeah sure Reggie's, is. Reggie's Radical Reggie's playing the, the video game, and he has reached the most baddest dude on the planet right here. Let's go ahead and watch this. This is a classic. Mm-hmm. And Michael, this was at the Hong Kong International Airport, right? Yeah, the old airport on top of the roof in the 90 degree sun. We'd, we'd sit there forever. There's one shot where I do a jump and spin and back kick, and we had to wait till a plane was coming in to try to time it with the plane. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that's one of my favorite shots. We'll see that coming up here. But look, he's just shrugging it off. You, you feel the impact, Bobby. Mm -hmm. yeah. Man. I was most impressed because Mike could move really well with his size. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta love that classic English dub in there. Yeah. Here we go, here, baby. Here it goes. Here it goes. Woo! Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. In trouble. You're in trouble. Ooh, man. Man. Yeah, this shot right here this is beautiful. I love that. Love that. That was really good. There was a shot similar in uh, The Iceman Cometh with Yuen Biao. And he fought you and Wa at the end. Oof. Oof. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> 
the dummy and wind up uh punch <laughs> that's like donnie's trademark uh michael was that yeah did you did you, that, did you teach him that michael uh, no no actually to be honest with you donnie Yen um went to a couple of boxing gyms johnny two hand was, was probably the main gym that he went to he went and studied a lot of different styles we went up to boston taekwondo yeah. joe penis school and yeah. we did some taekwondo up there we, it, it, he yeah. he um definitely did a lot of training without question again he probably to me he's probably the most skilled martial art fighting in the movies for that era um jet lee looks good when he's doing the posing type stuff but his right. fighting don't really look that exceptional and jackie awkward. is jackie's um you know his comedy oh. fight and his good and his little facial expressions and stuff are nice but yeah as far as like kicking and boxing and punching and could actually translate it into a real fight to me at that era donnie was the man for me but then you know you could say he he's my big brother so yeah i'm being i would have to agree with you mike man the balance you had michael to do that that was crazy it wasn't too balanced at the end no <laughs> Oof. What a classic. Classic. Michael's like, I know you ain't trying to choke me out now. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do this backbreaker on you. Oh, oh. That's so cool, Michael, throwing in, implementing the pro wrestling moves, man. That's so cool. Where's the balance oh. now? <laughs> <laughs> copy that, copy that. I got to go back. I got to go back a little bit here. Uh, this when I, when I first watched this fight, I was like, man, this is just, they are going at it. And right around here, Let's get to it. When I first watched this. I was like, man. Right, right, right around here, Michael, when your character gets up, <laughs> it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> like the first time I watched this many years ago, I was like, oh, God, no, 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 run. Run for your life, <laughs> Donnie. Nah, he already knew what was the outcome. <laughs> he read the script. Oh, but I love this. Just straight berserk. This berserk barrage we got going here. I mean, yeah. this is so good. Donnie, at this era, I don't know about the, the new films that he's doing, but back in this era, Donnie had a reputation of, of hitting the stuntmen and the guys he was fighting relatively hard because he wanted it to look convincing. Right, so there, right. there's, there's some shots. It was a shot in, in uh, Tiger Cage where he does a crescent kick and I hit the car. Yeah, they did 22 takes because he wanted to get it perfect, and they ended up using the second take. The side of my face was swollen for a week. Wow, oh that is amazing. That's woof. That's rough. That is rough. Right here, uh, was this Donnie taking this bump right here on the railing, or was it stunt guy right here? This right here. Let's see oh, that, because that looked like that hurt. This right here. That. Oh, I'm gonna be honest. The way it was cut, I would think it was a stunt guy, but I can't remember. Like I told you, a lot of this stuff I can't remember. So I don't want to lie and say yeah, either yeah, yeah. or. Um, fight wise, Donnie never really used a stuntman for big falls and stuff like that. I'm sure he did. But yeah, look at the look at the agility here with Michael. Look at that. Yeah, that's a good one. How many takes mm -hmm. was 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 this uh, right here? Michael? Nah, just a couple. A, a lot of these. When I'm doing something. It, it was quick when the person I'm fighting was doing something, they would keep doing it until they got it to where they liked it. Right, right, right. The objective was not for me to come out looking good. The, the whole sell point for me, besides black guy, was the muscle. And that's why they did the whole chest shot and 
have me looking at my arm when I'm squeezing and doing that yeah. type of stuff. It, it yeah. wasn't for me to look like some masterful martial artist or anything by no stretch right. of the imagination. Right. You 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 took you took Donnie Yen's character to the streets. That's right. You took him to the streets, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nothing you know. fancy, nothing fancy, or, or you know, just, that's it. Just straight brutality. Donnie like, had his share with street fights too. He's he's not, you know. Yeah. He's done his he's done his thing. Like you know, he was a young man at one time too. Right. Yeah. Copy that. But phenomenal fight. Hey, ho! That's right. That scratched. That scratched. The itch, baby. The action itch. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, speaking of scratching the action itch, whoo! It's been fifty years, Demetrius. Yes, 50 sir. Fifty years, and it's time to celebrate. Uh, Into the dragon, baby. Into the dragon, baby. Here we yes, go. Yes, sir. You <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. UASC 11, baby. November 11th. November 11. All the way. Man, November 11th. Is it is it is it being released everywhere or certain theaters, Demetrius? Oh, just at AMC Theater Times Square, November 11th. That's it. Wow. Wow. Look at, that. Look at that. Look at that. So y'all know what you need to do. You need to go. Urban action experience, baby. That's right. And uh, hey, it was an honor. Having Demetrius here, I'm gonna I'm gonna blow yep. up the legend. I'm gonna blow it up, Demetrius. Thank you so much, my friend. Appreciate anything you, before you, you before you uh, head out and do your thing, my my friend. Yeah, anything you'd like to that. say to your followers and fans? Absolutely, we appreciate your support. We're having the summer sale now, uh, so just go on to the post right below this that we posted. Uh, you can get a uh, twenty percent off on exhibit tables and tickets. Uh, we could, and you can also get a little sneak peek on what we're doing. Uh, 30th anniversary of Only the Strong. We got uh, Sheldon Leach, the writer and director, and he's also the director of Bloodsport. So we're going to be uh, also celebrating 35th anniversary of Bloodsport. Uh, we got a lot of surprises, so just keep you know checking us out. Yeah, Sheldon Leach. Wow, that is yeah, how man. exciting is that? That is awesome. Demetrius, salute, my friend. Thank you okay, so much. Okay, guys. Appreciate y'all. Keep doing what you're doing, and we'll get hey, you brother. back here in the future. Yes, sir. Hey, thank you for everything, Demetrius. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Take care, brother. We'll, have, bye -bye. we'll see you soon. See you soon. But we're still here, and we got more fights to watch and check out and have more fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, people are people are loving it. Great podcasts. The chat mm -hmm. is having a, a blast right now. Still, still enjoying the show. And uh, yeah, let's keep it rocking and rolling, man. But yeah, in the line of duty four, classic. My personal favorite out of out of all, I love all of them, but four is my personal favorite. And I, oh, uh, one of the reasons why it's my personal favorite, uh, Michael, is not just because I love the movie, but it's because uh, me and my friends, as many years ago, wanted to film our own little movie just for us we weren't you know trying to sell it or make money it was just something we wanted to make for us we were trying to make a little action martial arts thing and me and my brother excuse me me and my friend jeremy uh basically studied your fight uh, on on the rooftop we studied your fight with yen uh the camera angles uh, the movement and me and jeremy uh, i played you michael <laughs> i was studying i was studying your movement and uh, we were we were we were we were getting it down the fire choreography we were getting it down and I we performed it with uh, in front of my buddy who was who was the kind of the director just it was it was just for us family and friends and he really liked what he was seeing he had to tell us to slow down I was like what <laughs> <laughs> I was like I know I'm not Michael Woods fast but uh, it was nice for him to say that uh, Michael Woods ain't fast but okay <laughs> and, and that's cool but, you um, should you should post it up sometime and let everybody well, see it. Well, I'm, I'm getting. There's a little bit more. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we never got a chance to finish it because uh, my, my uh, buddy ended up passing away. So that's another reason why uh, In the Line of Duty Four is special to me, Michael, because we had a chance to share that moment. Because we love what you do. We love martial arts films, 
And that was a moment. So every time I watch this movie, I enjoy it because I love watching you and I love the movie, but I also love watching it because it brings back great memories of me and him uh, doing the fight sequence and the fight choreography. So I wanted to share that personal story with you, my friend, while you're here. So that's cool. And may he rest in peace. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, but yeah, let's keep on going here. Uh, Tiger Cage 2, man, I revisited this last night and uh, I didn't expect, I don't remember all, a lot of comedy being in this movie. There's a lot of shenanigans going on. There's a lot of comedy, but the fight scenes are legit. And of, of course, my favorite fight is with Michael at the end of the movie. Uh, but uh, yeah, how was it working with Robin, Michael? Um, Robin was cool. He was, uh, uh, you know, him and there was another cat in there, David. They, they were California dudes. So, you know, you got to speak a lot of English and, and uh, you know, that type of thing. Um, I don't know personally, but somebody told me that Robin had did an interview a few years later and he really said some good things about me. Um, I've never been able to run into him again. I tried to look him up on Facebook just to see what that interview was, but I could never find him. Um, but working with him was, was fine. Um, at that time, now I'm more adapted to Hong Kong. Hong mm. Kong for me took some getting used to. So now I'm, I'm running around. I'm in 97, hot gossip. You know, I hate to say it, but messing around with some chicks and doing different things. So yeah, I was more relaxed, more, more comfortable um then and, and and i had a better understanding of filmmaking what's to be expected 12 hour days 14 hour days 16 hour days in a tank top and maybe never get to shoot a shot and that type of stuff so so everybody was better to work with because i was better i have a uh you know um is this a family oriented uh podcast because i have a tendency of slip letting words slip oh no we curse um, all so the time michael we curse go. all the time go ahead well, I'm, I'm i'm known to be an asshole i'm known to be <laughs> into my you know like yeah. into my own little world i ain't uh -huh. kissing nobody's ass i don't care if somebody's right. a big time star or any of That's that right. if they right. saying or doing something that i don't like I, I i speak up and you know a lot of uh there was times donnie have to come to me and say oh yo you gotta be cool you can't do that you can't say that or whatever but by the time tiger cage 2 came i i pretty much had a good understanding of of the filmmaking process and people had a good understanding of me you know and so everybody was much more pleasant to work around nice all right copy yeah. that and speaking of working around uh let's rewind a little bit uh working around Going back to in the, in the line of duty four really quickly, how was it working with Cynthia? Uh, um, Cynthia Khan. Cynthia was Cynthia was somebody they were trying to build up. Cynthia, you know, was not a Michelle Yeoh or a Cynthia Rothrock or there was a Japanese girl. I can't remember what her last what her name is, Oshima, something like that. Yeah, Yukari. them were martial artists. Yeah. Cynthia was a dancer or something so cynthia and i think i did a movie in thailand with sybil who i think that's her name i don't remember what her name is they did not want to be touched they didn't if you're, you're throwing a shot and they're going to block it you had to go real easy mm. it, it, it was a, a a tad bit tougher to work with them than it is it was with some other people but then again, she didn't work with me a lot i i, I don't even remember if i ever fought her in a movie i, I honestly don't remember I know, um, I think John Salviti fought her and, and um, a lot of those people in Hong Kong, I hate to say it, are used to the British dudes. So she was much more comfortable around him than say to be around me. And plus you got the muscles and you're grumpy and you're an ass, whatever you are, it, yeah. it, people were kind of a, a little bit standoffish. You know what I mean? And then Donnie's pumping it up. Yeah, this dude's a fighter. He's this, that, and the other. So you know, I beat around the bush. I don't know if I worked. I don't, I can't even tell you if I fought her. I don't remember. Um, so. Yeah. I think, well, there was like a little quick altercation in the apartment, but it was very fast. It wasn't like a really big, uh, like long extended fight, but copy that. Yeah. Cynthia, they were, they were building her up and she does have some fans, but I'm just curious your thoughts on, uh, her work 
uh, and how it was working with her. But yeah, thank you for sharing that. But yeah, let's keep on rocking and rolling here. Tiger Cage 2, baby. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and have some fun and watch that. Here we go. All right. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that that drag. This movie I had a lot of say in in yeah. some of the stuff I did and and that's why there's a, a bunch of wrestling type stuff in it because I was doing some wrestling and, and things of that nature at that time. Yeah. Man that was brutal. Yeah. We'll go back we'll go back to that after this is over. Our favorite kick. Woo! Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, man. Oh, God. <laughs> I I enjoyed this fight scene better than I liked it, the rooftop fight scene from what I see of it. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Bear hug. Is it you think is this personally your favorite fight you've done, you think? One on one? No. I, I again, like I said, I never really watched any of them to the entirety, so I don't know, but I die in all of them, so none of them are fun. I guess if I had to pick a fun one, it would be one of those Thailand movies that I made, low budget. Probably right. nobody got to see them. But I got to grab Donnie and blow. We got to blow up together. So I finally got a revenge on him for killing me in so many movies. So it's <laughs> right, right. probably right. my favorite. That's Plus, right, Th nice. the Thailand movies were much more easy to do, much more laid back. Yeah. Um, not too demanding. Ooh. A shot or two when it was over. There was no 10, 15 takes. Right. Um, in Thailand, I like Thailand a million times better than I like Hong Kong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Copy that. Copy that. I gotta yeah. say though, man, like these movies are like the like the very few that I'm cheering for the villain. You know, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. I think the other one, well, one of them was um, the one with Jet Li in America. I think it's called. Um, Remember, there was a guy Billy Lou who was stunt yes. doubling, and he actually oh. got hurt. And I was pulling him off the when I pulled off the top. They said I pulled him too hard, and he went straight into the ground and cut oh, his wow. head. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, yikes. Uh, this move right stalker. here. This move right here is br brutality, this one. Yeah. This, this oh, like, man. And then get dragged right up. <laughs> do, uh, do you th uh, Michael, do you think this is the mo more brutal uh, of a fight than in the line of duty four, you think? Um, diff di it's a different type of fight um, yeah. than in the line of duty four. More people oh. talk about in the line of duty four. I think it got more more play, more international play than this. For me, I, I if I had to pick one, I'd, I'd like this one uh, much better. Everything Not about bad. it was better. The fight looks better. Mm -hmm. My moves look a little bit cleaner. Um, the location was, was a lot better. After doing these films, everybody understood everybody a lot better. And most important, I didn't have to go through Donnie to, to to say different techniques and stuff. Now I was talking to the the Yun clan, the That's wrestlers. Right. So nice. I got to do a few more things because sometimes when you say a few things, they don't they're not translated correctly. Right. That's awesome. You got a, a chance to contribute more for this fight. How cool is that? Uh, that shows trust, right? You and Mo Ping's probably like, hey, what do you want to do, right? Well, you know, uh, yeah, okay. 
they, trust me, there was a few things I wanted to do, and they're like, nah, 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 that's, oh. we're not going to do that. They they limited it. <laughs> so so they 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 kept the rain on it. You know what I mean? At this yeah. time, I I was doing all kind of flip kicks, twist kicks. Uh, jumping in the air, kicking four and five targets, a lot of crazy shit back then. And um, again, a lot of wrestling technique. Uh, right, right. A lot of, I, I did a little bit of this Japanese jiu jitsu, which was big before the Brazilians came out and the Gracies and, you know, the whole MMA thing. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of that stuff, they just basically said, nah, we can't shoot that or, you know, nah, we don't want to do that. So. I had some input, but copy that. Hey, well, they at least they gave you some, but that yeah, no, I'm, I'm I'm happy. Man. I'm not complaining. I'm not going to do backflips or nothing over it, but right, I'm right. I'm content. But the agility that that Mike's has, you know, yeah, that's a for his size. It was just amazing, you know. Yeah. With the with the muscle mass, sometimes it makes it difficult for the movements, but. Mike had total fluidity in, in the moves, you know, and I, and I guess that's a testament to his early training with both and Mark and them. Very well said, Bobby. Yeah. It's just the, the agility, especially for Michael's size. It's like mm -hmm. right here, the kickoff. I mean, look at that. Yeah. That's phenomenal. And oh man, that, that <laughs> body slam, Reggie. Yeah. You gotta watch that again, man. You feel it, man. Oh my God. It's so good. Here we go. I love the kick off the wall. Amazing. Yeah. Phenomenal. And then here we go. Boom. Mm. Oof. Oh man, so good, so good, so good. Uh oh, a, a legend uh, has to has to bow out. Not me, not me, <laughs> not yet, not yet. We're almost there. Uh, but Bobby, thank you yes. so much, brother, for popping thank you. in and thank joining you so us much. today. You know, yes. Bobby, you know this your second home, man. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. You know, yeah. I, this is Mike's night, and uh, I just wanted to come on and show my appreciation, my love. Like he's had such a an indelible impression upon my life and where I'm at right now. Um, but more so than the movies, he's just a, a, a kind uh, man. And I, I idolize and look up to him just as a human being. And I love him dearly. Yes. Yes. Copy that. Thank you. Uh, until next time, Mr. Samuels. Thank you. Yeah. Bobby, thank you for uh, stopping in. I appreciate it. Nice yes, talking to you and Always. let's continue talking and I'm going to yes, try to my best to make it in November, so we can, you know, shoot the breeze and I want the, I want the phone and whatever. God bless you and everything you do, and Thank take you, care, brother. brother. Thank you, Re uh, Reggie. I love you too, brother. Appreciate you. Thank Appreciate you, you much. You. Hey, Preston, you, make sure you tell him I want the photo with Carl, Ron, myself, and him. Wow, what that would be an iconic shot right there. Carl, Ron, and okay, Michael. Bobby says he wants a photo with you, Carl, and Ron. Uh, at the Urban Action Experience, a showcase. De definitely, I, I'd like that too. Uh, when you get this all hooked up, I hope you post it so I can actually hear Bobby myself. I can't I hear will. him now, but uh, yeah, I will. I will. I'll, all I'll right, send you, I'll send you the video right. and the link. I gotta go. Stuff. All right, Bobby. Guys. Take care. God bless. Yes. I'll yes, stay in thank touch. You so much. Bye bye. All right. All right. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Love that guy. Love that guy. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, just Tiger Cage too, man. That is such a yeah. phenomenal fight. The best fight in yeah, the film. The best is. fight in the film. 100%. But I did not know this, Michael. Uh, you were involved a little bit behind the scenes with Blade 2. Uh, yeah. Um, Whoa. I did work with uh, Donnie's stunt team um, along with, uh, I can't even remember who was there, John Salviti, Kenji Tananagagi. Yeah. Uh, yeah we, we Actually, on that film, they had a, a, a couple of different units. They had the Hong Kong unit, Donnie's unit, and then Jeff Ward had a unit who was who was um, Wesley's right hand man, so to speak, at that time. And and um, so yeah, we 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 had a little input. Uh, Wesley uh, got us in to do a, a quick little throw a punch and kick in case we wanted to join the union. Really, on that film, I was more or less got credited as Donnie's assistant. Um, that film there, that Hollywood film there, was in many ways, pure hell. It oh, was wow. so political that Re really? we were going to do a, we were going to do a scene where one of the people was was scaling down the roof. There were yeah. some bags on the floor in the area where um, the person was going to land. So I went to move the bag, 
And they start screaming at me, no, no, don't touch that. That's not your job. That's this person's job. They got to do it. You can't do it. I'm like, well, we're getting ready to shoot. And no, but they got to do it. The wow. union and this and that. Oh, it was, it was, wow. That was, that was, that was too crazy uh, of a, uh, of a set. And that, I, I, you know, if that's the typical Hollywood set, some of the things that like really turned me off. There were some good things about being in Prague. Prague's a beautiful city. Yeah. Um, and actually what ended up happening was I ended up training a lot of the actors for that. Uh, Luke Goss and a few of the actors. I did a little bit of work with Ron Perlman oh, wow. and a few other people. Yeah. Um, that was me and Donnie sort of had a falling out on that one. Um, mm -hmm. Donnie was under a lot of pressure. When, when he took the job, they told him, this is what your character is going to be. This is what's going to happen. Somewhere along the line, they said, no, nope, you know what? Now we're, we're going to kill you off. That's what, what he agreed to. There was a lot of bad feelings going on. Gotcha. And, um, well, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. So, uh, so we still enjoyed the movie though. <laughs> I still enjoyed blade blade two. Yeah, it was all right. Movie. Uh, to this day, I'll always say Blade Blade One was probably yes. the best. Yeah, uh, just like John Wick. I, I gotta say, I think John Wick One was better than all of yes. them. You know what that's I mean? That's what we were talking about. Um, the first one's better. It's hard to Jaws One was the best of that series. It's hard oh, to yeah. outdo the first movie. You yes. know, the only movie I saw that the se the sequels seem to be pretty good is the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the the, the original. Right. One, oh, two, and three all. It was all pretty interesting to me, but other than that, it's hard to it's hard to make the it's follow up tough. any better. Yeah. Two, was, two wasn't bad. Blade two wasn't bad. It was better than Blade three. It was, be <laughs> it was better, than, it was better than Blade three because there was a lot of a lot of problem on Blade three, and I think yeah, I don't know the story, so I'm not going to sit here and try to tell you. But what they wanted to do was make a spin off for the two characters. I don't remember yeah. who they were. Were they Ryan or Reynolds or somebody? I don't remember right. who the two other characters was in Wesley. Jennifer so he wanted yeah. to give them more of a part and back Wesley out. Gotcha. And I Wesley didn't go for it, so there was major problems. So three was fucked up right right off the bat. Um mm -hmm. two, I have to say that the CGI on two wasn't that good, especially the scene that you the picture you just showed and they had them two ninjas oh, you, coming down with Yeah, that, it, it was, was bad. It was, where, it was uh, really it was pretty bad. Nikki Berwick was, was the female that was stunt doubling for the yeah. actress. And she's a really good martial artist. But the yeah. way that made it look too much like a, a, a cartoon. It yeah, didn't like really come out well. Two CGI characters. It didn't look yeah. right. Even, even yeah. then, it, when the movie came out, it didn't look right. It just, yeah, like, it, that, that yeah. Was, was, was tough. Yeah. What's some of your other favorite movies? It could be non-martial uh, arts me? or action. What's some of your favorite films, Michael? It doesn't, have, it doesn't. It doesn't even have to be action or martial arts. It could be anything. Well, I, I, I really couldn't tell you. I like again. I like the girl with the dragon tattoo. I liked the one let uh, let the right one in the little vampire movie. All right. Oh yeah. I All like. Right. Um, uh, shit, I can't right. think of the, the King of New York, Christopher yeah. Walken, and all those guys before they became yeah. big timers. Yeah. Um, I, I I enjoy those type of movies. There's not really many martial art movies. I'm not a a guy that goes out and watches a lot of martial art movies. Yeah. I did when I was a young guy. I every Saturday and Sunday I watched a lot of those. Yeah. But I sort of kind of grew out of that whole genre. Yeah. If you yeah. are someone that wants to make movies in any any um any area, whether directing, action, or whatever. It's good to work on movies, but if you're someone that's not interested in it all, it's a curse to work on movies. Because once I worked on them and I saw everything that happened, every time I'd watch a movie, whether it be in the cinema or straight to DVD movies, which most of the martial art movies end up being, right. you go, oh no, that's a stunt man. Oh no, we see that big gap. You see all the mistakes. You don't enjoy the movie anymore. So I get more enjoyment out of movies like Shock NATO and stupid movies like that than I do most of these martial art movies. Because you know they're stupid movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, but the martial art fun. movie, you go in, like there was a movie Triple Threat, I believe. Right, a yeah. And I heard so much about it. I said, I got to go and buy this DVD. And I'll be honest with you, I was kind of disappointed. Because you, you, 
you already got the experience in making movies, so you can see a lot of flaws. Yeah. And there was a lot of guys. Um, Tony Ja, he, he, he's he's a good martial artist. Yeah. For his, for what he does, he's impressive. You know, yeah, the yeah. gymnastics and the in the in the Thai boxing and stuff. Uh, I'll try. Uh, I'll give you a martial art movie because that's what you really want. The no. movie that I we, I we like it all here horror drama. <laughs> I the movie I liked was the first raid. Yeah, it was way over the top. You, yes, you, you, for not for a minute could you believe in any of it. But I like the Mad Dog character. Yes, he, he's a little short dude, but he pulled it off. Yeah, and I liked the way they presented him. Yes, for me personally, the bad guy makes the movie. If the bad guy yes. is a good I'm bad gonna... guy, then the good guy shines. If That's not, right. um. And Mad Dog, I, I I totally like this character. The only thing I don't like about bad guys, and this happens in a lot of movies, and I know it's the script, they'll have the good guy chained up to the chair, ready to blow his brains out, but then they got to tell him a 20-minute story to give him a chance to get away. Yeah. That always pisses me off in the movie. I know that's what you're going to do. You can't kill a good guy off. Yeah. But I always it's, get aggravated with that it's, shit. It's exposition or monologue time. Mm -hmm. I must tell you my plan, but, you know, to give you a chance to get away. No, I, I agree with that. And then if you got to tell him the plan, tell him the plan after you killed him. There but other go. than that, the raid, yeah. the raid I liked the, the, the raid. Um, nice. And then there was other movies. If I had to yeah. pick a, a Michael Jai white movie can i take a guess um is it blood and bone that's that's my second favorite movie okay. my, my first favorite movie is his tyler perry movies that to me oh. showed me that he can be an actor, can actor he's not yeah. going to be tight cast as yeah. you know this you know really whatever they typecast him as he showed right, right, a little right, right. bit of versatility and he had a yeah. little small part in batman too but right. he you know that showed that he can spread his wings and hopefully he'll 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 do some type of stuff you know what i mean later yeah. on um, yeah blood and bone was probably my favorite of his martial art movies but not for the reasons you think i just like that he tapped out at the end it, so right. <laughs> there was a little bit of character in it, you know what i mean you don't expect that out of out of that character right right so, right Copy that. Well, you have you have great taste in film so far, Michael. He's a king king of New York. Led the right one in the raid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, you're. This is what we. This is all we do here, Michael. Is talk about yeah. all these movies: action, martial yep. arts, and horror and drama. Mm -hmm. We have fun here, so you're you're right at home here. Uh, yeah. But let's let's wrap it up with one more fun little clip uh, with uh, our uh, our brother here, Michael. Just a, I only I couldn't get a lot of footage, but let's just show everybody watching right now. Uh, Michael in action in Cheetah on Fire. And by the way, by the way, spread it, hashtag it. 88 films, 88 films, okay? Uh -huh. We need Cheetah on Fire and Crystal Hunt. We need them on Blu-ray, 88 films. Come on. We need them remastered. It happen. A double pack, I think, would be perfect. A two-pack Blu-ray of Cheetah on Fire and Crystal Hunt needs to happen. So make it happen, 88 films. So... Uh, but yeah, let's have some fun. This is, this is a few little highlights here for those who have not seen uh, Cheetah on Fire. So let's check out Michael here. Man. Oh. <laughs> Man. Whoa. Okay. It was sort of nice not to have to fight Donnie again. Come and get it. Ooh, man. Woo! Woo! These guys that shot this one or two takes, they didn't they didn't even care. It wasn't you know, these are them quick shot, run to Thailand, make a quick movie, and that type yeah. of thing. So it's much more easier gotcha. to do. 
you know, going to plant. <laughs> Man, this is just beautiful carnage. Beautiful I've carnage. Never seen right D, this is why this needs to come out on Blu-ray. Yeah. Well, I don't think these movies were really big in in Hong Kong. I don't know if they made it out of to uh, like the European market or the American market or whatever. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I I just look at it, phenomenal, just in action. There's a lot more action, guys. If you can actually find uh, Cheetah on Fire with Michael in action. Uh, but I just wanted to show a little bit, of, a little taste here. But yeah, I, I think I have this on VHS, Michael. <laughs> That's wow. how I was able to watch it. But this, this bump right here. So, uh, how was it working? Uh, the differences, in your opinion, Michael, with the the Hong Kong stuntmen and the Thai stuntmen. What were the well, uh, the diff big differences? Thai stuntmen were probably about the craziest. They were doing. They do all kind of crazy shit. Get busted up. Get drug off the field, and somebody else would jump right back in. Wow. Um, Thailand was everything about Thailand filming the people yeah the food the treatment everything in Thailand to me was much better oh wow okay. Hong Kong, you got you got you, you had a lot of attitude in Hong Kong some of those people were big time big timers in Hong Kong cinema yeah. so you know it sort of looked kind of down on you. Some of the people didn't really want foreigners to come over there and take their roles and, you know, mm. and whatever. But yeah. in Thailand, you know, the people that you work with, there was a bunch of different action stars in those movies. As a matter of fact, somebody was pointing out to me, there's Beardy, there's this one, there's that one. Yeah. Um, and at Gordon Liu, I mean, yeah, Gordon. everybody was on the, I, I want to say, if they were doing these movies, I want to believe they were on the downswing of their career. So there was mm -hmm. no macho attitude at all. Gordon Luz had a bunch of conversations with us while we were filming this oh, without, okay. without oh, any cool. kind of attitude whatsoever. And, and the same thing goes, uh, uh, Jackie Chan's bodyguard he uses that name, Ken Lowe. I don't know what name he uses in these films. Cool dude. Um, uh, yeah, he's great. Most, Ken Lowe's most, great. Of, most of the Women actresses were really nice. I can't remember anybody's name right now. I was just, you just had a scene where I threw a punch at one of the little girls. She was like, excellent, nice person. I know she was a big star at one time in Hong Kong. Um, you, know, you know, the only one that was a little bit hard to work with, and I don't even know what her name is. I think it was Sybil Hu. But um, don't quote me on it. I don't really know yeah. who she was. I might even be wrong. I don't know what her name was, to be honest. I might be calling somebody's name that I don't even know. So if anybody fun. knows, maybe you can, I'm on Facebook, text me the real name because I, I, I hate <laughs> to say the wrong name yeah. about these people. Half of these people, like this kid here, I don't even know who he is. I fought him. He was yeah. a nice guy. Don't remember his name. Don't know if he's a Chinese actor or a Thai actor. The man, um, so much action right here. Yeah. Look at that. They, they, they're desperate. <laughs> they got to team up on him. <laughs> well this was this is this is pretty good. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. This is great. That's so awesome. You got to work with Gordon Liu and hang out with a man. Third the, the that's right. Uh Sante, Sante Monk, Third Six Chamber of Shaolin. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah he's so. in this movie. Reggie, he's in this movie, man. They fight. Yeah. Like he has a fight scene in here. Like there's tons of action in this he's movie. Fighting Donnie, Donnie Yen. That was him that came in the door when the door yeah. opened up. Yeah, that was him that came in. Yeah, this needs a Blu-ray. I think a, I think a, a a double pack Blu-ray of this and Crystal Hunt would be perfect. You know, there's a lot of there's other people out there that you should talk to. I recommend if you can ever hook up with John Salvitti. He did a lot of movies, and then him and Donnie maintained a friendship, and he went back and shot, uh, uh, helped Donnie shoot a couple of movies. Yeah. Um and uh, he's a wealth of knowledge. And he has a much better memory than I do. And he was in most of those movies, with the exception of Tiger Cage. That was Stefan Berwick, who's another guy you could talk to. He's an intellectual. Um, so he, he ended up becoming a martial art historian, big time Chen st style Tai Chi guy. He wrote a few books and a few articles. So he's someone that has a mass amount of knowledge. And he's someone that Donnie Yen would call up and talk to, you know, and just bounce ideas off of. 
there's, mm-hmm. there's, there's, there are a few people out there that 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 are pretty interesting that probably right. has far more knowledge of what's going on than than myself. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. I'm an old man. Um, I don't have a great memory. I have a few health issues that I'm dealing with, and I got out of the film industry a long time ago. And you know, it's not something that I, you know, look back upon. You just showed me some fight scenes that I haven't seen. Uh, the whole entire fight scenes. I saw little bits. My son showed me on uh, YouTube. Um, yeah, yeah. Eighty-eight films. Somebody from Eighty-eight Films did actually send me that Ford box set, and um, I just got it on my mantle. I never nice. opened it up. I have no intention of of watching those movies yeah. or anything. Yeah. Well, it's cool. It's cool that you have it because those are, those are, those represent, you know, something special to, to us mm-hmm. fans, you know, that have, that you've inspired and influenced over the years, Michael. And, uh, we, again, uh, this is probably a perfect time to wrap it up for today. Again, uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, Michael, yes, appreciate for, you. for, for coming on here. It's an honor, my friend. You know, they, they tell you, you know, they uh, never meet your heroes. Well, in today's case, I'm very happy. That I got a chance to meet you, my friend. Yeah. And, well, uh, it would, I'm glad we did this. It was nice talking to you. Yes. Uh, I can't hear Reggie down there, but I I watch <laughs> it in, in in the uh, <laughs> when you send me the copy in. And, and yeah. Demetrius is a good dude. Bobby Samuels, like I said, was probably one of the best dudes I met in the whole martial art genre filmmaking yes. world. So th- this was nice to do. Um, I'm gonna throw a little plug. You can cut it out later. Oh. The only thing I do with martial arts now is I try to save uh, books, magazines, and DVDs. So if anybody got anything out there they want to sell, if it's at a reasonable price, hit me up on Facebook. I am trying to put a little library together before I leave this earth. Copy that. Copy that. Well, thank you so much again, Michael. Uh, Don't go anywhere, Michael. Reggie, don't go anywhere. But you guys, you guys know what you need to do. Hey, if you enjoyed yourselves here. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the old Samurai Guy. Subscribe to Radical Reggie. That's right. Follow uh, the legend, Mr. Woods, on Facebook. That's right. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Keep enjoying cinema, all the genres. That's right. And we'll see you on the next one. Take care.